David Taylor, I don't see David here yet, but certainly the guest of honor is here. Artist Danny Oven, whose yeah, work, yeah. yes. <laughs> whose works are featured in collections of the White House, the Library of Congress, the Museum of the City of New York, the New York Historical Society, and now Bronx Unity College. Danny's sense of place features world-class art created by a world-class artist. However, I want to emphasize that this incredible work was created in the Bronx. It showcases the Bronx, and it will reside in the Bronx, just a few steps from where you're standing. The sense of place is one of the largest public art commissions in the Bronx since the 1930s. It features classic Bronx vistas, neighborhoods, and BCC campus scenes. Two 10-foot wide mirrors grace the stairwells leading up to the information commons. 20 paintings elaborate the frieze along the balcony in our majestic new North Hall and Library, designed by Robert A. M. Stern Architects. A sense of place is an app title, and one that invites us to share in the ownership and recognition of these scenes and places as our own. It brings into focus, quite literally, the meaning and value of our campus and borough as a place on the map and great works, museum, and institutions worldwide. On behalf of our students, faculty, and staff, and our president, I'd like to thank Danny for his commitment to this project and congratulate him on his success to this monumental collection. We consider this to be a good contribution to the legacy of the Bronx and our place in the world. Thank you very much, Eddie. I want to thank everybody uh, for coming out here today to view this spectacular artwork that Daniel put together for all of us. It really is a gift because the students of Bronx Community College are able to you know, take part in something that they don't see on a daily basis. And that is great artwork designed and created by a great artist here in the Bronx. And that is phenomenal. So Daniel, thank you for everything that you've done you know, for Bronx and College and our students. My first introduction to Daniel and his work was actually uh, not too long ago uh, when we did the grand opening of the library uh, where we got to take a look at some of the you know, technology and all the work that went into it. And I asked a question, I was like, who designed these great pieces you know, of art that's right here on the staircases and inside the library. And that's where the president of the school and everyone introduced me to Daniel. And I said, this is really phenomenal stuff. And then when Lenny uh, Carroll, the head of the Chamber of Commerce, said, we want to do something to, you know, honor not only Bronx Community College, not only the library, but the great artists over here. Can you be a part of it? I said, of course, because this is a Bronx site who is from here and is, who's giving back you know, to, to the community, but who also has his artwork featured all over you know, the United States. And that is an accomplishment that we have you know, to, to show all these students in Bronx Community College that you can be from the Bronx, you can be educated from the Bronx, and you can make it all over the world because you're a Bronx site. So again, I want to thank everybody you know, for coming out here today for this great celebration. The artwork is phenomenal. These are scenes from the Bronx, and it, it shows the Bronx in the, in the right light, the positive light, and that's artistic light. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, the president of the Bronx Chamber of Commerce, Lenny Cowan. Good evening, everyone. I don't even know if I need this mic. I think it's fine. This is a great room. You know, about uh, two months ago, Doc from the Historical Society called me up. He says, you got to meet me. You have to meet this guy. I says, oh, okay, Lenny, it's important. Getting there, I got a little lost, but I got to see him, got to uh, meet me on the corner and bring me into a magnificent place of art. And I sat down and absorbed everything. We are now becoming the greatest borough in the city. We're building the first Marriott Hotel, the brand new golf course, the new shopping malls, the new Macy's. Nobody knew that we had the greatest artist in the world right here in the Bronx. Dan, you should be congratulated. And on October 1st, the Chamber of Commerce holds its large scholarship fund, which is over 1,500 people. We probably will have the governor speaking, Donald Trump, and the mayor. 
they will be able to see your artwork because you'll be exhibiting with us this year. So we're proud to have you there. And we're proud to be here to support you. You're a Bronx side a long time like me, and being president of the Bronx Chamber, we want to make sure we highlight the important people here in the Bronx. Joel, thank you for those, and ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here tonight. This is what it's about. Thank you very much. And now it's my pleasure to ask the executive director of the Bronx Historical Society to join us. You know, it's not often that we have particular moments in our lives where we can address a time, a place that has such significance that we'll always remember it. This exhibit and the one in the permanent one in the new library is one of those times. We have amongst us here an artist who is the most famous artist the Bronx has ever produced. Here he stands with his new hat. He doesn't look anything <laughs> like that in normal, but that's where he is right now, Danny Halbert. So do you, Danny. Thank you. The Bronx has about 1.4 million people. Maybe it's even much more now, who knows. More people are coming in, and after what we were just told by uh, Mr. Caro, things are really developing in our borough. It's taken way too long, but it's happening. And parts of this are about the creative juice that we all represent. Uh, when you hear that schools cut back on music and art and dance, it's outrageous. It's an outrageous breach of the trust that we all have. We're historians. We keep track of everything. We know as the tides come up and go down. Here we are in Bronx Community College, without question, the finest campus in the city of New York. It is without question. And now you have the best library. And when some of you, how many people have not been there yet? Raise your hand. Oh, not at all. Well, some of you, will, you're going to be astounded. This is a first class library, research center, place for students to come to, for us to talk about. Even the guards, when you come in and you say, I'm here for the art. You mean Danny Halbin. His art is located. They know right down where it is. Make sure you go on the right-hand corner. That's my favorite staircase. There's a 10-foot. They know. They feel it. It's very important for us to all go from this kind of point and say, we must do what's possible to make the creative art, the creative juice of what makes and continues our society, our great society that melting pot that just keeps getting better. Thank you for having us here. I ask David Taylor to join us, uh, who will introduce our guest of honor. Thank you. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, you know, I have some talking notes because in introducing Danny, you know, it's good to recount where we came from. And it was January of 2008 that the eight members of the art committee sat down with the task of reviewing the work of 21 different artists. And we didn't ask for much. We asked that they tell several stories at once, that they look at the past, present, and future, that they work with a literary theme, that they incorporate the history of the campus and its architecture and that they make our unique and unusual geography recognizable and memorable. So as you can tell, uh, it was not a small order for Daniel to fill, but I think we were pretty unanimous in looking over his work and knew right away that Daniel had what it took. We went from time to time, we visited the studio, we saw the work in progress, and in August of this year, when the work was installed and open to our students, our expectations were confirmed. The students came in with a sense of excitement, a sense of joy to be able to look around, see the work, feel the warmth that Daniel produced in his artwork, and to feel the sense of pride that this was a new building that belonged to them, and here was the artwork that represented their communities. So Daniel, we owe you a debt of gratitude for all of the heart, 
the blood, the sweat, and the tears that you put into producing your work. And it is fitting that on October 17th of this year, Secretary uh, Ken Salazar deemed Bronx Community College a historic national landmark. And Daniel's work fits in as the capstone to that designation. So for all of our students, our community, I want to thank you and the show is yours. And I must add that his work is for sale. <laughs> Pleased to see you all here tonight. Uh, it's a special, special talk about capstones. You know, a long, long journey, and hopefully uh, one that's going to continue on with the momentum that we're experiencing here in the Bronx. Um, let us hope that this event points to a greater role for art in all of our lives. Well, not my life per se, but every, everybody else's life. Uh, and in the life of our community. And I'm sure that there is no one here tonight who needs to be convinced of the vital role of the arts and what they, how they can uh, help the growth and development of our community. And I hope that my presence in the Bronx and involvement with my community for over 30 years points to another idea of how artists can participate in and be an invaluable asset and inspiration to society. A day or two ago, my wife Judy and I were reflecting on how we have been so focused on what needs doing and writing and finishing and fixing that we haven't appreciated the wonder of it all. <clears throat> the serendipities, and the surprises, and all the marvelous pe people that this journey has uh, brought into our lives. And um, I want to take this opportunity to express my deep appreciation to all the people I'm so grateful for, and to show in that way uh, that the myth of the lonely artist hold up in his or her studio is just that, it's a myth. And I wish to thank the following people from the bottom of my heart. My wife Judy, and art spouse for life. Um, my liaison, I'm not sure, uh, an advocate throughout this four year odyssey, Jennifer McGregor, I'm not sure if she's here. Um, Doc Hermelin for keeping my feet to the fire and my eyes on the prize. Amy Kish for her patient guidance and professional packaging. Carolyn Williams, I'm not sure if she's here, uh, former president of BCC who uh, had the vision that became the North Hall and Library and had the fortitude to see it become a reality. David Taylor, <laughs> and the rest of my committee who rolled with me throughout this journey and who allowed me the freedom of expression and gave me such encouragement. Thank you. And all the great folks here at Bronx Community College who worked so hard to make this event the best ever. I really, uh, it's uh, having a, a team. I want to keep you all. I need you all. Um, I'm so especially grateful to Lenny Caro and the Bronx Chamber of Commerce for making my event their event. Lenny, thank you. And for the Split Rock Golf Course and the other contributors uh, for what is, what is a really special moment for me. People are always asking me, why do you paint the Bronx? Honestly, I have not yet come up with a definitive answer. What I can say is that I have always sought through my art to find a greater sense of my place in the world. Today, with the help of so many extraordinary individuals, I feel a deep connection to my Bronx community, and I feel my life is filled with purpose. Thank you. <laughs>